In this session today, we are going to look at a, a very interesting aspect of uh, 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 our interesting application uh, in which uh, database technologies are used, uh, namely the, uh, uh, the, the, the field of uh, data mining and knowledge discovery. In fact, in uh, recent years, data mining has become uh, 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 an extremely, uh, 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 a field of, uh, field that's eliciting an extremely large uh, number of, amount of interest, not just from researchers, but also from uh, commercial domain. I mean, the, 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 the commercial utility of uh, uh, data mining is probably, uh, 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 is, is probably of more interest than, uh, uh, or, or at least as much interest as, as, uh, uh, as the research interest that's, that lies in uh, 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 data mining. And uh, in addition to commercial um, uh, interest, there's also a number of uh, public debates uh, that, uh, uh, th that, uh, uh, that data mining has uh, started. Uh, which range uh, from uh, uh, which range from topics like uh, legalities and uh, uh, ethics and uh, 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 and the rights to uh, s certain uh, uh, information and uh, the, the rights to uh, non disclosure of information or, or the rights to privacy and so on and so forth so so data mining actually is uh, in in some sense has has opened a uh, um, has opened a Pandora's box in, uh, 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 with, uh, and uh, it is, uh, it's only, uh, it only time will tell whether, uh, 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 whether uh, uh, the, the technology has, has, uh, has given, uh, uh, has been uh, on an overall sense uh, completely beneficial or, uh, or destructive in, in nature. But, but then uh, uh, there's nothing uh, uh, beneficial or destructive uh, about technology per se, uh, it's how we use it, uh, 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 how we use technology which is what uh, matters. So, so anyway, uh, in this uh, uh, session we shall be concentrating mostly on the technical aspects of data mining obviously, uh, and uh, we shall look at the basic uh, algorithms and uh, concepts that, uh, that make up data mining and uh, 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 what exactly is meant by data mining and how does it differ from the traditional, uh, 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 traditional uh, operations of databases or a traditional uh, uh, way in which databases are used. So the overview of uh, uh, this uh, 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 this set of two sessions uh, would be uh, as follows. Uh, let us uh, first uh, motivate uh, the need for data mining, that is uh, why data mining, and uh, what are some of the uh, basic underlying concepts in data mining, what, uh, what are the building blocks of, of data mining concepts. Then we look at uh, data mining algorithms uh, and uh, several classes of these data mining algorithms. Uh, uh, we will start with tabular mining as, uh, as in uh, mining uh, relational uh, tables and we will uh, uh, look at uh, uh, classification and clustering approaches and we will also look at uh, mining of uh, other kinds of data like uh, uh, sequence data mining or mining of streaming data uh, and so on. And uh, 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 data warehousing concepts were, would, would be uh, covered as a, uh, a different session altogether. Uh, first of all, why data mining? Uh, from a managerial perspective, uh, let us first look at what uh, data mining has for the commercial world first uh, before we go into uh, looking at the technical aspects of data mining. Uh, if you uh, uh, were to, uh, let us say, give an internet search or, or uh, talk to a manager, uh, let us say, about, uh, 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 about why he or she would uh, invest in data mining, uh, you would encounter a variety of answers. Uh, one would say something like strategic decision making, that is, uh, uh, I look for some kinds of uh, 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 s some ways or some patterns and uh, 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 are mine for certain uh, nuggets of knowledge uh, uh, to, to, to uh, understand uh, something about uh, 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 something about strategic decision making or to help me in strategic decision making. Uh, somebody would say, well, it is uh, uh, very useful for uh, uh, 
uh, something called wealth generation also uh, although uh, there is no precise definition of the term wealth generation uh, and uh, you would say that oh data mining would, would help me in uh, 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 understanding or making the right decisions uh, that, that can help me uh, increase my financial portfolio or whatever. Uh, somebody would say well I would use uh, data mining for analyzing trends, analyzing how my customers behave or analyzing how, uh, 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 how uh, 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 a particular uh, uh, market is behaving and so on and so forth. And uh, more recently uh, uh, data mining has been uh, uh, used extensively uh, for security purposes, uh, especially uh, uh, mining uh, network logs or uh, network streaming data in order to, uh, uh, in order to look for uh, uh, abnormal behavioral patterns or uh, patterns that might be potentially uh, uh, linked to abnormal activity in the network or, uh, or in the system and so on. So uh, security is now uh, 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 relatively recent and a very important, um, uh, uh, very important uh, application area of uh, data mining. So what is this data mining all about and uh, why is this uh, 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 so controversial and why is it uh, 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 so interesting uh, from a technical perspective at the same time. Uh, data mining uh, is uh, the, the, the generic term uh, used to um, look for hidden patterns in, uh, in data uh, or hidden patterns and trends in data that are not immediately apparent uh, by just summarizing the data. So if I want to look for certain patterns, uh, let us say uh, uh, if I have a set of all uh, uh, students and their grades, if I want to look for certain patterns uh, on how are the students uh, performing over time or what is the, uh, uh, is there a, uh, is, is there some kind of a relation between subject A and subject B? I mean if a student uh, uh, does well in subject A, he, uh, he or she does badly in subject B or so on and so forth. Such things cannot be discovered uh, by just aggregating the data. Uh, uh, by just saying uh, uh, what is the average or what is the summation or whatever. And uh, besides such things also cannot be discovered uh, by, uh, uh, I mean such things in a sense cannot be uh, within quotes discovered if we have to uh, give queries uh, that, that finds out these aggregations. That is um, uh, <coughs> uh, if, we, if we already knew what it is that, that we are looking for then uh, uh, it, it, it's not a hidden pattern anymore. We, we know uh, we know that that uh, such a pattern exists. That is, uh, uh, students performing in subject A will not perform well in subject B. We, we know that such a correlation exists, and uh, uh, and uh, th there's there's nothing hidden in the pattern anyway. So uh, data mining uh, essentially has no query. That is, uh, if we are performing a data mining on on, on a database, uh, we do not talk of any data mining query. Uh, in fact, the, the, it is the uh, it is the mining algorithm that that should give us something which we don't know. Okay. Now, uh, how do how do we say uh, something that, uh, which we don't know, which is uh, which, which is uh, uh, putting it in a very broad sense? I mean, which is uh, which is making things so vague. So, data mining is actually uh, controlled by what are called as interestingness criteria. And uh, uh, we, 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 uh, we just specify to the database that this is what we understand by, uh, uh, by an interesting pattern. Uh, let us say correlation between performance in subject A and subject B or uh, uh, some kinds of trends over a period of time. This is what is interesting for us. Now find me something or find me everything uh, which uh, I do not know about or which, uh, 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 which are interesting according to this uh, criteria. So when we talk about data mining, uh, we have a set of data to begin with, that is we, we have a database and then uh, uh, we give uh, one or more interestingness criteria and uh, the, the output of which will be uh, one or more hidden patterns uh, uh, which uh, we did not know exist uh, in, in the first place. Now uh, <coughs> given this model, uh, uh, we should say, uh, now uh, when we say patterns, uh, th then uh, th the obvious question to ask is what type of patterns, what do you mean by patterns or uh, uh, what do you mean that uh, this is uh, or when do you say that something is a pattern and something is not a pattern. Now if you have to answer that we have to uh, ask two further questions that is uh, what is the type of data that we are looking at, okay, what kind of data set is it uh, th that we are looking at and what is the type of interestingness criteria that we are looking at, uh, what do we mean by interestingness. Uh, is it uh, 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 correlation between something, w what exactly do we mean by interestingness? So let us look at uh, uh, the, the different type of data that, that, uh, uh, that we encounter in, in different uh, situations. Uh, the most common uh, kind of data is the tabular data. 
or the relational database, right? Uh, which is in the form of a set of tables. Or uh, 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 now, the, uh, a slightly different multi-dimensional form of uh, uh, database. Uh, so, uh, and uh, it's it's very common that is uh, any kind of transaction data that is, uh, uh, let us say, data coming out from the database at uh, uh, from an ATM, for example, or the data coming out from uh, uh, the, the the transactional database at uh, at a uh, 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 at a railway reservation counter or at a bank or uh, uh, any place like that uh, are all tabular in nature. So uh, uh, it's a, uh, it's the most common form of data and uh, uh, which is a rich source of data for uh, uh, to be mined. In addition to tabular data, there are uh, spatial data, for example, where uh, uh, data is represented in the uh, form of either points or regions uh, which uh, uh, which have been encoded with uh, certain coordinates, uh, x, y, z uh, coordinates. So uh, each point, in addition to having certain attributes, uh, also has certain coordinates. And uh, mining uh, in, 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 in this uh, context also requires uh, us to know wh what is the uh, importance of the coordinate system. In addition to spatial data, there are other kinds of data like say temporal data. Uh, temporal data uh, in the sense that where uh, each uh, data element has a, a time uh, tag associated uh, with it. So temporal data could be, uh, 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 for example, streaming data where uh, uh, network traffic or a tra uh, uh, set of all packets that, that are flowing through a network uh, forms uh, streaming data which, which just flows past uh, and uh, uh, where, where each packet can be allocated some kind of a timestamp, or something like uh, activity logs, uh, your your database activity log is a, is a temporal data. Uh, there could also be spatio-temporal data, that is, uh, uh, data that are tagged both by time and coordinates, and other kinds of data like uh, tree data, which. Are, uh, 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 for example, XML databases or graph data, where uh, especially uh, biomolecular data or, or uh, uh, World Wide Web is, is, is a big graph data and so on. Then there are sequence data like uh, 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 data about uh, genes and DNAs and so on. Uh, and again, activity, I mean, sequence is a kind of uh, a temporal data where, uh, uh, where uh, timestamp need not be explicit in, uh, in this um, uh, in, in, t uh, in sequence. Then uh, text data, the arbitrary text or multimedia and so on and so forth. So, so there's several different kinds of data that we can, uh, 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 that, that can be the source which, which uh, 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 from which we can extract or mine for uh, unknown nuggets of knowledge. Similarly, when we talk about interestingness criteria, uh, several things could be interesting. If uh, cer certain pattern of events or certain patterns of uh, uh, data keep occurring frequently, uh, then uh, it might be of interest to us, uh, so something that happens very frequently. Okay? So frequency by itself is an uh, interestingness uh, uh, criteria or, 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 a, or an interestingness uh, or, or a criteria on which interestingness can be based. Similarly, rarity, if something happens very rarely uh, uh, and, and we do not know about it or uh, let, let us say uh, uh, rarity is again a very uh, 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 a uh, very interesting pattern to be searched for uh, when we are looking at uh, 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 say abnormal behavior uh, of, uh, of, of any system or uh, abnormal behavior of network traffic and so on. So something that happens uh, uh, rarely that is, uh, that is uh, away from the norm uh, uh, is, uh, is again an interestingness uh, pattern. Correlation between two or more uh, uh, elements and uh, if the correlation being more than a threshold is again interesting or length of occurrence in, in the, in the uh, case of sequence or temporal data and so on. And consistent occurrence, uh, uh, consistency, that is uh, consistency is, uh, is different from uh, uh, frequency in the sense that uh, overall uh, in, uh, in, in the set of all databases, in the, in the uh, overall for the entire database, uh, a given pattern may not be frequent enough. For example, there, the, uh, there could be a, there could be one particular behavioral pattern, let us say one particular uh, 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 a customer comes to a bank uh, every month at, at the tenth of each month, uh, right? So, uh, if you are looking for frequently uh, banking customers, let us say, uh, this customer would not uh, fig figure out in, uh, uh, in this uh, algorithm because uh, this customer comes only once a month, whereas other customers could be coming many times a month. However, 
if we are looking for consistency in behavior, uh, then uh, uh, this customer's behavior is far more consistent than someone who comes, let us say, uh, 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 arbitrarily 10 times the first month and uh, uh, once the second month and uh, 50 times the third month and, and so on and so forth. So, uh, in terms of consistency in, in, his, in his behavioral pattern across different months, uh, uh, this pattern is, uh, is interesting even though it is not frequent. Then uh, repeating or periodicity uh, uh, is, is slightly similar to uh, consistency uh, except that uh, 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 periodicity is, uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, consistency is, is across the entire set of, uh, 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 across, the, uh, across the entire set of months if, if, we have, if we have divided our database into months. But periodicity, the, the, the time interval could, could vary in, in, a, in a periodicity of a pattern. Uh, uh, if a customer comes, let us say, uh, uh, five times to the bank every six months, uh, uh, we may not be able to catch it as, as part of a consistent uh, uh, pattern analysis, analysis, but uh, if you use a uh, uh, if you use an algorithm that, that detects periodicity of, of several uh, occurrence of events, you will be able to detect it. And similarly, there are, there are several other patterns of interestingness that uh, uh, which one could think of. Now, uh, when we talk about uh, data mining, uh, usually uh, there is a, 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 a sometimes a misconception and uh, not, not completely, but uh, uh, usually there is a contention that uh, data mining is the same as statistical inference. Uh, for, a, for many cases it is yes, uh, the, the answer is true that is uh, uh, several concepts from statistics have been incorporated into data mining and uh, 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 data mining software uses uh, uh, statistical uh, concepts or uh, many kinds of statistical algorithms uh, comprehensively. However, uh, uh, there, there is a fundamental difference between statistical inference and, and data mining, uh, which, uh, 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 which is perhaps the uh, which is perhaps uh, the reason for the renewed interest in uh, in data mining algorithms. Uh, uh, and uh, here is the uh, 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 general idea be, uh, behind uh, data mining versus uh, statistical inference. Uh, what do we do when we talk about statistical inference? Uh, statistical inferencing techniques uh, essentially have uh, the, the following three steps uh, as is uh, shown in this uh, slide here. Uh, in statistical inference, we start out with a conceptual model or what is called as the null hypothesis. That is, uh, we, we we've first of all uh, uh, present ourselves or, or uh, perform a hypothesis about the system uh, uh, in concern. That is, uh, we make a hypothesis that uh, uh, if uh, 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 some, something to the effect that uh, 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 if exams are held in the month of uh, 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 March, uh, then uh, uh, th there would be, uh, 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 I mean, uh, th then the turnout would be higher than if it is held in the month of June or something like that. Now, based on this hypothesis, uh, we perform what is called a sampling of the data set or, or, or of the system. Now, sampling is a very important uh, 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 step in a statistical inferencing process. There are, uh, th there is huge amount of literature into what is meant by correct sampling or what is called as a representative sample and, and so on. Now, based on the sampling of, uh, of data sets uh, from the system, uh, we either uh, prove or refute our hypothesis. That is, we, uh, uh, we show a proof saying, yes, uh, uh, this, this hypothesis is true because uh, a, a statistical sampling uh, of the system has, has shown that this is true. Uh, otherwise, it is uh, it's false. Now, uh, uh, when we sample, uh, for example, if you are uh, if you are performing a statistical inference about uh, uh, user preferences or, or uh, let's say some kind of market analysis, we uh, we present a questionnaire to to different users based on our null hypothesis or based on our uh, conceptual model. Now, it is this set of questionnaire. Now, th this questionnaire. Uh, has been created by our conceptual model. So, so this questioner already knows what to look for and uh, the, the proof uh, or, uh, or, the, or the answers will, will either prove or refute the hypothesis. But data mining on the other hand is a completely different process uh, or rather it is it's the, uh, it's the opposite uh, process. In data mining, we have, we just have a huge data set uh, and uh, we do not know what is it that we are looking for. Uh, we, we are not. We don't have any hypothesis. We don't have any uh, 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 null hypothesis to, to begin with. We just have a huge data set, and uh, uh, we, we just have some notions of interestingness. 
Now we use this interestingness criteria to, to mine this data set and usually there is no sampling that is performed on the data set that is uh, the, the entire data set uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, scanned at least once by the, um, uh, by, by the data mining algorithm in order to look for patterns. So there is no question of a sampling and there is no uh, 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 null hypothesis to, to, to begin with. So we just have a uh, uh, vague notion of an interestingness based on which we uh, 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 we uh, uh, present an algorithm, data mining algorithm over the data set. Now out of this comes out certain patterns, uh, uh, certain interesting patterns which form the basis for, uh, 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 for, for forming a hypothesis. So it is sometimes also called hypothesis discovery. Uh, uh, obviously uh, of course we cannot discover complete hypothesis using just uh, data mining but we, we do discover patterns using which we can formulate a hypothesis. So it's uh, in a sense it's it's the opposite process of uh, uh, statistical inference. Let us look at some uh, data mining concepts. Uh, uh, two fundamental concepts are of uh, interest uh, uh, in uh, uh, in data mining, uh, especially in the, in the the core algorithms of uh, uh, of data mining, especially the a priori based algorithms. Uh, these are uh, what are called as associations and item sets. Uh, an association, when we say an association, it is a rule uh, of the form. Uh, if x then y uh, as shown in this uh, uh, slide here and it is denoted as x right arrow y okay. For example uh, if India wins in cricket sales of sweets goes up okay. If India wins in cricket then sales of sweets goes up okay. So here x is India wins in cricket and y is the, uh, uh, is, is the predicate that sales of sweets go up okay. So uh, 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 we say that we discover such a rule uh, if we are able to uh, conclusively say based on analyzing the data that uh, whenever uh, India wins in cricket the sales of sweets go up okay. Uh, and uh, uh, on the other hand uh, suppose uh, if there is any rule of this form that is if x then y uh, then I can imply that if y then x okay. That is the, the ordering of these rules uh, is not important okay. Uh, if India wins in cricket then sales of sweets go up, if sales of sweets go up then India has won in cricket and so on which may be true or may not be true but, but if that is the case then it is called an interesting item set that is it is just a, a set of items. For example people buying school uniforms in June also buy school bags or you can also say people buying school bags in June also buy school uniforms. So, so it is just a item set that is uh, uh, school uniforms and school bags are, are, are a set of items which are uh, interesting by themselves. Once we define the notion of a uh, association rule and, uh, uh, and an item set uh, we now come to the concept of uh, support and confidence that is how do we discover uh, 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 a rule to be interesting. Uh, we say that uh, a rule uh, is, is interesting in, in, the, in the sense of uh, frequent occurrences of, of a particular rule uh, uh, if the support for that rule is high enough. That is the, the support for a given rule R is the ratio of the number of occurrences of R given all occurrences of all rules. Okay. So uh, 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 we will look into the, the exact uh, or we will illustrate the notion of support in the, uh, in the next slide with an example uh, where, uh, where it will become more clear. Um, and uh, when we say the confidence of a rule okay, suppose I have a rule uh, if x then y then the confidence of the rule is suppose I know that x is true okay, the ratio uh, of all occurrences when y is also true versus when uh, uh, for, for all other occurrences when, when x is true and something else is here. Okay. So that is uh, uh, it is the ratio of the number of occurrences of y given x among all other occurrences given x. Okay. So if, uh, if, if I know that x is true with what confidence, with what percentage of confidence can I say that y is also going to be true. Let us look at some examples here. Uh, let us say uh, uh, these are some uh, item sets, let, let us say these are data that have been uh, distilled from uh, 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 purchases of uh, different uh, 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 consumers over a period of time uh, or uh, in, in a given month let us say okay. So, so uh, the, the first consumer has bought a bag, a uniform and uh, a set of crayons. The second uh, consumer has bought books and bag and uniform. The third one has bought bag, uniform and pencil and so on and so forth okay. Now uh, <coughs> suppose I take the item set bag and uniform okay bag comma uniform what is the support for this item set? 
Now the support for this item set is look at all the uh, uh, transactions or, or the rows here in which uh, bag and uniform occur. Okay, one, two, three, four, and uh, five, uniform and bag. Okay, uh, so, uh, out of a total of ten rows, five of them have bag and uniform occurring in them. Therefore, the support for bag and uniform uh, uh, is 5 divided by 10, which is point, point 0.5. That is, with uh, uh, this data set uh, supports the assertion that bag and uniform will be, will be bought together uh, uh, with 50 percent support, that is 0 0.5 as, as its support. Okay. What is the confidence uh, that, uh, 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 what is the confidence for the rule if bag then uniform? That is, what is the confidence by which we say sub whenever somebody buys a bag, they also buy uniform. Okay. For this, we have to look at the set of all item sets or the set of all transactions or rows here in which bag and uniform, bag occurs rather not just uniform, okay, in which bag occurs. So, bag occurs in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different rows, okay, out of which bag and uniform have occurred in 5 different rows. Therefore, the confidence uh, for, for this assertion uh, or this uh, association rule is 5 divided by 8 which is, uh, 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 which is about 62 percent. That means, if some, if some uh, consumer uh, has bought a bag, then with 62 percent of confidence or 62.5 percentage of confidence, we can say that uh, the, the consumer will also buy uh, uh, a uniform, a school uniform uh, along with this. So, uh, the question now is how do we mine or, or how do we find out uh, the, the set of all interesting item sets and the set of all interesting association rules. Now, look at it, uh, uh, look at, let, have a look at this uh, 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 previous slide once again. Now, the association rule, when we talk about association rules, uh, we, have, we have just uh, or rather when we talk about uh, uh, item sets, uh, first we, we just saw a single item set having two different elements here. Okay. But that, that need not be the case, bag by itself could be an item set, a single element item set, uniform by itself could be a single element item set, crayons could be a single element item set or let us say bag, uniform and crayons could be a three element item set and so on. So, item sets could be of any size, uh, size 1, size 2, size 3, size, size n, uh, any uh, uh, set of elements. Now, we have to find the set of all. Uh, 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 item sets that is the set of all items uh, that are bought together uh, and, and uh, that, have, that have been bought together uh, frequently as part of uh, this transaction log here. Now, uh, now how do we do that? Now, now uh, there, there is a, a very famous algorithm called the a priori algorithm uh, which, uh, uh, which, which performs such a discovery process that is uh, a discovery process for all frequent item sets in a very efficient manner. The simple idea behind a priori algorithm uh, it is uh, shown in this slide here. However, uh, uh, let us not go through the slide in, uh, in, in, in a uh, lot of detail, uh, 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 since uh, 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 it will be uh, uh, more easier to explain a priori through an example. The, the idea behind a priori algorithm is that, uh, uh, the essential idea behind an a priori algorithm is that, suppose I have any n element item set. Let us say, suppose I have any uh, five element item set that is interesting or that is frequent. Okay. So, if this five element item set is frequent, then it, uh, then all subsets of this uh, item set should also be frequent. We, uh, th this seems obvious, but this is a very important conclusion uh, uh, or it is a very important uh, uh, observation in the a priori algorithm. That is, if I discover the set of all one frequent item sets, that is the, the set of all item sets of size one, which are frequent then uh, there is no need uh, for me to look at other item sets when I am looking for uh, 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 two frequent item sets. That is, uh, the, the set of all item sets of size 2 which are frequent will be made up of combinations of set of all item sets uh, of size 1 which are frequent. So, let us uh, illustrate the, the, the process of a priori with an example. Let us take our uh, um, uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, let us take our uh, 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 consumer uh, database again, uh, the, the previous consumer database again, where uh, we have uh, uh, consumers buying uh, several school utilities like bags and school bags and school uniforms and crayons and uh, 
pencils and books and so on and so forth. Now uh, suppose we set uh, 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 when we say or when we ask the a priori uh, alg uh, miner uh, to, to mine for all interesting item sets, uh, we have to uh, the interestingness criteria here is frequency that is frequent occurrence. Now frequency uh, uh, is uh, 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 or interestingness here is parameterized by uh, a, a threshold parameter which is called the minimum support okay, or min sub. Okay. So, so let us say minimum support is 0.3 that is we term uh, uh, an item set to be interesting uh, if its support is at least 0.3 or greater. Right? Now given this what are all the interesting one element item sets? What does it mean to say uh, what are all the interesting one element item sets? Which one element item sets occur at least uh, at a rate of 30 percent or more. Okay. Now this database here or this data set here uh, has a total of 10 rows. Therefore we have to look at uh, all one element item sets which occur 3 or more times. Okay. So uh, given this we see that all of these are interesting that is bag, uniform, crayons, pencil and books. Bag occurs much more than 3 times, uniform also occurs more than 3 times crayons also occur uh, uh, more than 3 times and so on. Okay. So all of these uh, uh, elements here occur more than thrice uh, which uh, therefore uh, all of these one element item sets have, uh, <coughs> have, a, uh, have a minimum support of uh, 30 percent or more. Okay. Now from this suppose we have to look at the set of all interesting two element item sets. Okay. Now uh, uh, how do we uh, <coughs> Uh, how do we uh, build the set of all interesting two element item sets? We uh, just look at all possible combinations between one element item sets. Therefore, we have bag uniform, bag crayons, bag pencil, bag books, uh, uniform crayons, uniform pencil, uniform books and so on and so forth. Right? Now out of this for each such two element item set that have been created, we have to see how many times they occur in this, uh, uh, in this data set. Okay? Now we see that it is only these set of uh, 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 combinations which have a minimum support of 0.3 or more. Okay? So for example bag uniform, bag uh, crayons, bag pencil and bag books all of them uh, uh, along with bag are interesting. However um, uh, let us say uniform and books uh, is not interesting that is it, it, it does not occur uh, more than thrice. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, uh, let, let us see how many times uniform and book occurs. Uniform and books uh, occur once okay, and uh, second one twice here. Okay. So, so they occur only twice uh, but, but we need a minimum support of 3 times. Okay. So, uh, so that is not interesting. Similarly uh, <coughs> uh, a pencil and uniforms or uniform and pencil is, ag is again not interesting. Okay. So therefore uh, uh, we have uh, 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 filtered away or, or we have thrown away certain item sets from our, uh, 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 from our uh, exploration here and identified only a smaller subset of uh, 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 the set of all possible combinations of one element item sets. Now from this uh, if we have to look for all three element item sets we have to uh, generate the set of all candidate three element item sets. What are the candidate three element item sets? Uh, perform a union across all possible uh, combinations of, of these uh, uh, interesting two element item sets to create all possible uh, uh, distinct three element item sets okay. and then look for those three element item sets which occur uh, at least uh, three times or more in this database. Given that we see that there is only one three element item set uh, that is bag, uniform and crayons uh, that is interesting that is that, that occur uh, at least uh, three times or more or that has uh, at least uh, uh, that has a uh, um, uh, uh, support of uh, at least 30 percent in this uh, uh, in this data set right so uh, as you can see the the a priori algorithm uh, 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 you can visualize the a priori algorithm uh, in the form of uh, 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 let us say an, uh, an iceberg okay uh, 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 such queries are also called as iceberg queries when when, when given onto databases that is uh, uh, at, at the uh, uh, at the base there are a large number of one element item sets but w once we start combining them together uh, we start getting smaller and smaller uh, uh, numbers of, uh, of combinations uh, and uh, we, we peak out at, at a very small number of uh, uh, large item sets which are frequent. 
So the, the, the beauty of the a priori algorithm is that uh, the, uh, for, for every pass it does not need to, uh, need to uh, go through the entire data set. Uh, 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 it, does, it does not have to uh, parse through the entire data set. It only needs to con, uh, consult results of the previous iteration or results of the uh, 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 or, I, or item sets that are of one uh, uh, element one lesser than the present iteration in order to uh, uh, construct candidates for the uh, present iteration. So uh, given this uh, uh, algorithm here, let us go back and uh, uh, look at the a priori algorithm. Uh, given the uh, explanation here uh, with an example, let us go back and look at the a priori algorithm, which, uh, 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 which will now be a little more easier to understand. Initially, uh, we start with a given minimum required support uh, S as the, as the interestingness criterion. Okay? Now given uh, minimum support S as the interestingness criterion, first we, are, we search for all individual elements, that is one element item sets that have a minimum support of uh, S. Okay? Now uh, uh, we start, uh, we, we go into a loop where we start uh, uh, looking for item sets of uh, uh, sizes higher, uh, greater than 1. Okay? So from the results of the previous search for I element item sets, okay, uh, uh, search for all I plus 1 element item sets that have a uh, minimum support of S. This in turn is, uh, is done by first generating a candidate set of, of I plus 1 item sets and then choosing only those among them which have a minimum support of S. Okay? Now this becomes the set of all frequent I plus 1 uh, <coughs> element item sets that are interesting. So this loop is repeated until the item set uh, size reaches the maximum. That is there, there are no more candidate elements to be generated uh, for the next item set or there are no more frequent uh, 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 item sets in the uh, current iteration. Now that was about item sets. Uh, the uh, 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 property of item sets is that uh, there is no. Uh, uh, I mean, you you basically consider item sets uh, 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 as as one entity. That is, there there is no uh, ordering between the item sets. That is, it does not matter uh, if uh, uh, if uh, 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 somebody buys a bag first or a uniform first or a. a uh, or a crayon first or whatever uh, as as long as uh, 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 the, the the only thing that we are going uh, that we can infer from this is that uh, uh, the item set bags uniforms and crayons uh, are uh, are quite likely to be bought together uh, in 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 one piece therefore uh, if i am let us say uh, a supermarket uh, 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 vendor uh, i mean uh, 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 as someone uh, uh, having a supermarket then it would make sense for me to place bags and school uniforms and crayons uh, next to each other so because there is the, there is a higher probability that uh, all three of them are uh, are bought together but when we are looking for association rules uh, we, are, we are also concerned about the direction of association that is uh, 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 th there, there is a, a sense of direction saying if A then B is different from if B then A. Okay? So association rule mining requires two different threshold, the minimum support as in the item sets and the minimum confidence uh, uh, with which we can talk about, a, uh, uh, with which we can uh, say uh, or determine that, uh, uh, that a, uh, a given uh, association rule is interesting. So how do we mine association rules using a priori? Uh, again, uh, uh, we shall do the same thing like we did in the past. Uh, we shall come back to this algorithm or, or the general procedure uh, after we have illustrated the example uh, by which we can mine uh, uh, a priori, uh, 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 using a priori algorithm by which we can mine uh, association rules. Now, uh, <coughs> the, the main idea is the following. Now, uh, 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 use the a priori algorithm and generate the set of all frequent item sets. Okay? So, uh, so let us say we have generated a frequent item set of uh, 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 size 3 uh, which is namely bag uniform and crayons uh, with, with a min sub uh, or, uh, of 0.3 that is a minimum support threshold of uh, 30 percent. Now uh, <coughs> this bag uniform and crayons can be divided into the following rules. Okay? If bag then uniform and crayons, or if bag and uniform then crayons, or if bag and crayons then uniform, and so on and so forth. Right? Now, uh, uh, what does this thing mean? This thing means that when a customer buys a bag, 
okay then the customer also buys uniform and crayons and this rule means that uh, if a customer has bought a bag and a school uniform then uh, the, the, uh, the, the customer will also buy a set of crayons or uh, if a customer has bought uh, a, a bag and a set of crayons then the customer will also buy a school uniform and so on okay. Now we have got uh, all of these different association rules. Now uh, each of these association rule has a certain confidence uh, in, uh, in this uh, 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 based on this data set. Now uh, what is the confidence for, for each of these rules? What is the confidence for the rule uh, if bag then uniform and crayons that is if a customer buys a school bag the, uh, then here she is uh, uh, will, will also buy uh, a school uniform and uh, a set of crayons. Uh, the, uh, in order to calculate the confidence of this we have to first look at which are all the item sets here that have bags that is where, where the customer has bought uh, a bag okay. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different uh, entries where a customer has bought a school bag okay. Now among these 8 entries uh, in how many different uh, uh, entries did the customer also buy uniform and crayons? One and um, two, three. Okay, so so there are three different uh, uh, entries, uh, 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 three different instances out of eight instances where uh, uh, where this rule uh, holds. So therefore, uh, whenever a customer buys uh, a bag. Uh, one can say with uh, uh, 3 by 8 uh, or 37.5% or, uh, uh, percent of confidence that the customer is also going to buy uh, uh, a set of uh, school uniform uh, and uh, crayons. Similarly, uh, we can ca calculate the confidence for each of these uh, other association rules like uh, this is 0 0.6, 0 0.75, uh, 0 0.428 uh, and so on and so forth. Now uh, given a, a minimum confidence as our uh, um, as a second threshold then uh, 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 and suppose we, we say that the minimum confidence is 0 0.7 then which are the rules that we have discovered uh, every rule that has uh, a confidence of uh, at least 70 uh, percent or more. That means uh, we have discovered the, the, the following three rules bag if bag crayons then uniform, uniform crayons then bag and crayons then bag and uniform. Okay. Uh, what does that mean in, uh, in plain English? It means that uh, people who buy a school bag and a set of crayons are likely to buy a school uniform as well, right? That is <coughs> bag and crayons uh, uh, implies uniform. Okay. Similarly, people who buy a school uniform and a set of crayons are likely to buy a school bag. Okay. That is uh, uh, here. If somebody buys uniform and a set of crayons, then they are also likely to buy uh, a, a school bag. Similarly, uh, if uh, somebody buys a set of crayons, then they are very likely to buy a school bag and a school uniform as well, right. So uh, 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 th that is here, that is uh, somebody buys crayons, then uh, th th with 75% uh, uh, confidence, one can say that uh, they also buy bags and uh, uh, school uniforms. So uh, again, it's, it's, it's a question of uh, direct marketing or whatever, if somebody is interested in crayons, then uh, 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 you might be reasonably sure that they are also interested in a bag and a school uniform and so on. Okay. Now, <coughs> uh, uh, so, so let us look, at, look back at the algorithm here for, uh, for, for mining association rules. Uh, simple uh, uh, mechanism for mining association rules is uh, first of all use a priori to, to generate different uh, item sets uh, of, of different uh, sizes and at each iteration uh, we can uh, divide each item sets. Uh, into two parts uh, an, an LHS part and an RHS part the, the left hand side part and the uh, antecedent and the precedent that is and the right hand side part. So this represents a rule of the form LS, LHS implies RHS. Then uh, the confidence of such a rule is support of uh, LHS divided by uh, that is uh, support of the entire thing divided by the support of LHS uh, <coughs> that is support of uh, uh, LHS implies RHS div divided by support of LHS will give us the confidence of this rule. So, uh, uh, and then we discard all rules whose confidence is less than min conf. <coughs> so, uh, 
So uh, now let us look into uh, uh, the question of uh, um, uh, <coughs> how do we generate uh, uh, or how do we prepare uh, uh, a tabular data for uh, association rule mining or uh, 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 or let us say uh, 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 item set mining and so on. Now, uh, because we use let us say relational data set, uh, relational database, uh, you might have observed that. Uh, or you might have uh, uh, got a little doubt when we have been considering a data set like this. There is something peculiar about this data set. Uh, what is uh, peculiar about this data set here? The, the, the peculiarity is that uh, it looks like every uh, consumer coming to this uh, uh, store is buying exactly three items, which is very unlikely. Uh, uh, in fact, what is more, uh, 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 what is more uh, 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 practical is that uh, uh, this set, uh, this data set uh, uh, contains records of variable length. That is, uh, uh, one customer may, may have bought just uh, uh, two different items, where, whereas some other customer may have bought ten different items, whereas uh, a third customer may have bought only uh, five different items, and a fourth customer may have bought only one item, and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, so uh, it is not possible to uh, represent this item set like a table like, like a well formed table like this because uh, uh, b because it basically uh, is a uh, uh, is, is a set of all items of different lengths in fact the best way to represent this would be uh, uh, in in a normalized form let us say in uh, uh, in, a, in a database where uh, 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 for example the same bill number here 155563 155, both of this refer to the same customer that is it's the same customer who has bought books and crayons okay and this is not completely normalized because uh, uh, date is not uh, really necessary here but uh, uh, but nevertheless uh, 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 here uh, all of these uh, records are of, are of uniform length and uh, uh, th their uh, 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 if if we order this based on the set of bill numbers then we get uh, the the set of all different transactions now uh, Depending on what we are looking for, uh, this this ordering might uh, 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 might make a difference. Now, how does this ordering uh, make a difference here uh, 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 when we are looking at a data set like this? Suppose, given a data set uh, uh, like this here, performing group buys on different uh, uh, fields will yield us uh, different kinds of behavior uh, data sets. Okay, so what what does it mean? Suppose, let us say. Uh, we uh, we perform a group by based on the bill number okay so uh, 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 suppose we perform a group by on the bill number on on this uh, table then uh, each group will represent the behavior of one particular customer that is one bill represents one uh, or one bill number represents one particular customer or one particular transaction right so uh, uh, suppose we group by based on bill numbers and then perform a priori across these different groups, then we would be getting frequent patterns across different customers. On the other hand, suppose we group by uh, over date, okay? so uh, rather than bill number. Okay? So uh, uh, all uh, transactions happening on a given date will come into one group and all transactions happening on uh, another date will, will come into another group. But uh, a, a given date may have transactions from several different customers, but all of them are now uh, uh, grouped by uh, grouped into one single group. Okay, so uh, uh, and suppose we run a priori over this set, over these different groups, then uh, uh, we would uh, uh, th then we would actually be uh, looking for frequent patterns across different days, that is across the different dates. Okay, so uh, uh, we have to interpret what uh, uh, what we mean. Uh, by uh, something that is frequent based on how we have ordered the data. Uh, if, uh, uh, if we have ordered the data over uh, uh, different customers, then it would show aggregate behavior over the set of all consumers who are uh, 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 with whom you are interacting with. On the other hand, if you have, uh, 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 if you are running a priori or, or, or if you have performed group by over, uh, uh, over uh, dates, then it would show you aggregated behavior over a given time period rather than over the set of all uh, 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 over the set of all uh, uh, customers well uh, it also includes the set of all customers but what is more important here is that uh, uh, how does the behavior uh, uh, or how has the behavior changed 
over time. So, so if something is frequent over time, uh, it means that uh, uh, it is uniformly or in, in some sense consistent over, uh, over this uh, uh, entire period of time. So um, let us uh, summarize what we have learnt uh, uh, in this session. Uh, we started with the notion of data mining. Uh, and uh, uh, like I said uh, uh, in the beginning, data mining is uh, is, a, is 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 a very interesting uh, 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 subfield of, uh, of databases, uh, which uh, 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 which has elicited a lot of interest, not just from researchers, or and not just from the technology perspective, but uh, from several other perspectives, like uh, uh, defense perspective, or, uh, uh, security perspective, uh, uh, commerce, uh, the, the, there is business perspective, uh, and so on. So, uh, and uh, there, there are several debates that, that, uh, 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 th that have raged on uh, whether it, uh, it is right to use data mining to, to, to look for certain behavior patterns. For example, uh, uh, would it be right uh, if, uh, um, uh, if a government uses uh, data mining uh, over, uh, over let us say uh, 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 the, the, the set of all different uh, activities of, uh, of people and find out uh, the, the, the behavior pattern of, of any particular individual and so on. So, uh, 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 and uh, uh, there the, the are pros and cons of uh, uh, on, on both sides of the debate. One, one would say for security reasons it is, uh, uh, it is uh, right to look for uh, 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 behavior patterns and one would say uh, well uh, for privacy reasons it is not right to look for behavior patterns and so on and so forth. So, it's, it's a, uh, uh, it is a topic which is very much pertinent and has uh, spawned a, uh, uh, spawned a uh, a uh, huge amount of interest in se from several different areas and data mining uh, 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 is uh, is in some sense uh, uh, i called it a subfield of databases but uh, uh, that's not entirely true in a sense that uh, uh, data mining and knowledge discovery uh, many uh, would claim uh, uh, is is a field in itself that is uh, it relies on database uh, 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 concepts uh, as well as several other concepts like uh, uh, learning theory or uh, statistical inference and uh, uh, and uh, 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 several other concepts in order to perform uh, data mining. Uh, so, do not be really uh, surprised if one would uh, say that uh, uh, data mining is, is, a, is a complete field in itself and it is only uh, associated with databases not really subfield of databases. So, but anyway, uh, uh, data mining as we said uh, is, the, uh, uh, is the process of discovery of previously unknown patterns in the sense that we are not really uh, sure what is it that, uh, that, that the database is going to give us or what new uh, uh, pattern or wh what new nugget of knowledge so, so to say uh, uh, is uh, uh, we, we are going to learn uh, as part of the data mining process. Uh, as a result there is no query as part of a data mining uh, uh, process uh, that is uh, 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 a data mining algorithm uh, is based around uh, uh, one or more interestingness criteria rather than uh, a given query. And uh, we saw that uh, uh, in uh, uh, conceptually it is, uh, it, it, it is in, in some way the opposite of statistical inference where, uh, uh, where we start with a null hypothesis and uh, either refute or uh, prove uh, our hypothesis by sampling, uh, statistical sampling of, of the population. Uh, while here uh, uh, we, we do not start with a hypothesis, but uh, the end result of, uh, of the data mining process uh, is a set of uh, uh, patterns which can help us in formulating a hypothesis. We also saw the notion of association rules and item sets as well. Uh, and, and the concepts of support and confidence. So, uh, and uh, uh, two different algorithms, the a priori algorithm for, uh, for, for mining uh, frequent item sets and from which we, we uh, 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 also uh, 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 saw the a priori algorithm for mining association rules. Uh, in the next uh, uh, session on uh, data mining, we are, we are going to look at several other algorithms like say, classification uh, uh, or uh, uh, discovery. So, uh, that brings us to the end of this session. Thank you.